Hey everybody and welcome to today's video on Azure Verified Modules or AVM for short. Um, I'm Jack Tracy, uh, you may have seen me around on things like Azure Landing Zones and Subscription Vending, mainly on the bicep side of the house and I'm joined today by my colleague Matt. Uh, Matt, do you want to give us an intro? Thanks Jack. Yeah, my name is Matt White, uh, Matt FFF, FFF on GitHub. I also uh, get involved with Azure Landing Zones and I own the Terraform modules for that and also Subscription Vending. So yeah, excited to talk to you about AVM today. So AVM's our latest uh, project that myself and Matt have been working on for like the last six to nine months. And it's all around bringing together a shared uh, infrastructure as code module strategy and single source of truth across Microsoft for today, Bicep and Terraform, but who knows what, what will be in the future. And we'll get into that throughout today's session. So let's start on why, why are we solving this problem, right? Um, we see a lot of our customers, you know, when they start out on their cloud journeys, starting with deploying resources through the portal, operating and managing them through the portal, and something we we deem click ops as a, as a cliche term. Um, customers then go through that natural progression of going, hey, we should start doing things like infrastructure as code, using some Bicep, using some Terraform, uh, maybe some ARM templates, and we should start doing this via pipelines, you know, GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps pipelines, those sort of things. Um, and that's great. All these teams run off and do these separate things across an organization. And then you realize that, you you know, you step back and you go, hang on, we've got five different ways of deploying a VNet, 10 different ways of deploying a VM, and 15 different ways of deploying a storage account. We should probably get together and centralize this and, um, and make some efficiencies and, you know, don't repeat ourselves everywhere, right? And reduce the amount of code we've got to maintain. Um, so you then go on that journey of trying to decouple and stop repeating code and rationalize everything. Um, and somebody goes, hey, we should probably look externally here because I'm pretty sure somebody else has solved this before. Or Microsoft might have something for us that can help us on the, along on this journey. And that's a great you know, place to be. You then go out there and find in the wild that there's many infrastructure as code repos out there with their own standards. They all have different specifications, different principles, different goals, and different support statements. Um, and you're left as a customer to make a decision on which one works best for your organization. Uh, and effectively, you have to pick one uh, at random or with some uh, the most educated guess you can make at that time based on the requirements you have. Um, if you happen to pick a Microsoft one at this this stage, so something in a uh, GitHub uh, org that's under Azure or under Microsoft, you may then start using that and be happy and you know getting support and all of those things. But over time, over the course of years, you may then actually discover that you know it's not being maintained as much as it was before, and it might have become stale. And that may actually be because it was never officially supported by Microsoft. It was just a community project and an open source inspired project from Microsoft that started and just happened to be from an FTE that had access to put it in those organizations. Um, and that can reflect badly on Microsoft, which all, obviously all of us want to avoid, and we want our customers to have the best experience. Uh, so the challenge uh, that I've just outlaid was given to myself and Matt at the start of uh, our financial year. And the solution that we've come up with and we're here talking about today is Azure Verified Modules. I'm going to hand over to Matt now to talk to you a little bit better, more about what that actually is. Thank you, Jack. So ultimately, Azure Verified Modules is has been created to address the problems that Jack so eloquently described. The first is that these are supported these have an owner in Microsoft, an FTE, and there is a process um, to transfer ownership whereas, as, as people change roles. You can raise a support ticket on these modules and it will get uh, directed to the module uh, maintainers. We have also spent a lot of time aligning Azure Verified Modules across Microsoft. Actually, Azure Verified Modules is the amalgamation of two previous projects. One is uh, Terraform Verified Modules run by the Terraform PG, and the other one is Carmel, which was a, a bicep project uh, run by um, uh, some people in the ISD team in Microsoft. And what we've done is we've brought these two programs together to create a unified strategy for IAC at Microsoft, um, which brings together really the best of both worlds. We are aligned with the well-architected framework, and uh, which is essentially secure and available by default. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a minute. And ultimately, it's designed to accelerate deployments through familiarity. So you're not having to start from scratch every time. So what do we mean by secure and available by default? Well, well-architected availability um, says that you should deploy in two zones. So that's what we do by default. The default value for if a resource supports it will be to deploy in a zone available configuration. Secure by default, things like disabling public access. 
as a key vault module, for example, when you deploy it, you will not be able to access it publicly. Now, of course, you can if you want to, but you have to explicitly set that configuration. It's not the default. Let's dive into a little bit about the types of modules that we have. The first is a resource module. Now, that deploys a resource in a meaningful way. And what we mean by that is you don't have to necessarily worry too much about the way the ARM resource model is constructed. If you want a VM, you get a working VM in that it has a disk and a network adapter, the necessary resources to make it work. However, we draw the line at creating subnets because the subnet uh, is a part of the virtual network module. So by using the virtual network module and the virtual machine module together, you get uh, a working uh, solution. We've also made the decision to allow resource modules or to insist resource modules uh, also deploy child resources. But the virtual network also module deploys subnets and the key vault module deploys keys and secrets. In that way, we feel it's a more complete experience without having to micromanage multiple individual types of modules. For pattern modules, which is the other type that we have, their goal is to deploy a collection of resources uh, in a meaningful way to achieve a goal. So following on from the resource module examples, if you think about an application tier, we might be looking at a load balancer, a virtual machine scale set, network security groups, and optionally, maybe a public IP address. And what you're able to do with that pattern is maybe stitch multiple ones of those together, plus maybe a database resource module, like an Azure SQL resource module. And that then provides you with a solution to deploy an N tier application. So to kind of summarize, the value proposition is familiarity to developers, familiarity to platform engineers. It, it should be easy to get started. Like one of the ways we do this is have st having standard interfaces for common Azure resources um, or extension resources. Like things you want to do with your storage account might be you want to give it a private endpoint. You might want to uh, grant role-based access control on it, especially data plane access. Um, for other resources that support it, you might want to uh, give those resources a managed identity or a customer managed key. What we've done is standardize the interfaces for all of that. So module authors must provide the same set of inputs in order to enable those features for their modules. That actually hides some of the differences that we have in our APIs behind the scenes, especially customer managed keys. Lots of resources implement that in a different way, but you don't have to know that. What you as the consumer of the module have to do is learn the interface that we've created and we handle that complexity. Thank you, Matt, for uh, giving us that really detailed insight into what AVM actually is. I think if you're now a customer and a consumer going, hey, this sounds great, like what, what do I do with this? Like where does this fit in my journey? Um, we, we've got this slide to hopefully help uh, answer that question for you. Uh, this is from our subscription vending documentation that myself and Matt put together uh, last year. Um, and as you may have uh, worked out yourselves, um, this is more targeted at the application teams or the developer teams when you're getting into that adopt phase of the cloud adoption framework. Like when you're ready to deploy uh, your resources and build your, you know, your service or your application, what you're deploying into your application landing zone, this is where these modules really help your application teams do that. Um, but we are noticing that some teams are using these or, or want to use these to build their platform elements as well. Um, and that's something that we're actually doing inside of the Azure Landing Zones Terraform module vNext, that if you've been following that story uh, and we're very close to getting something out, you'll notice that actually those uh, modules for things like the hub networking, virtual WAN, management, those sort of uh, group of resources that are technically platform landing zones, you know, the things underneath the platform management groups, um, they are all pattern modules inside of AVM. That is their direction. We have moved them into this project because this is the future that we believe, that central library of assets of resource modules, all those atomic units that we can stitch together and then give everybody that value of all of those common interfaces and all of the greatness that Matt has just spoken around. So it can fit in both. But ideally, it's for your application teams to not have to start from scratch every time so they can take these modules and really build and accelerate at pace. So Matt, how do our customers find out more about this stuff? Thanks for asking, Jack. We have a website. So aka.ms slash AVM is the link. The first thing I'd like to point out on here is the support statement. So we've also got a, a short link for that, aka.ms slash AVM slash support, so where you can see uh, our commitment to you, and our commitment to keeping these modules maintained and um, up to date. 
if you're into the weeds, if you're into the detail of this, we also publish all of our specification. So we've got functional and non-functionals for the general Azure Verified modules. Uh, we've also got them uh, as they pertain to resource and pattern modules, as well as um, language-specific specifications. Because even though we want to unify things as much as possible, we should also make the best use of each language uh, as we can. And there are certain characteristics and ways of doing things in one language that might not be sensible in another. So we try and keep things familiar. So if you're familiar with Bicep, it will feel like a Bicep module. If you're familiar with Terraform, it will feel like a Terraform module. If you're interested in uh, proposing a module, oh, sorry, there's a module indices. So we actually publish the indexes of the indices of the modules that we are, are either in development or are being published uh, or, or have been published, sorry. But if the, you can't see the module that you want on that list, then you can request, you can propose a module. And the link for doing that is on the screen now. If you are interested in contributing, please indicate as such uh, when you create that issue, what it does behind the scenes is create a GitHub issue, which we can then triage. We have already, um, and we are able to support external contributions as long as we have a Microsoft FTE as a kind of sponsor for this. And the reason for that is because oh, we need to support it. So we need to make sure it's owned and there's a person responsible in Microsoft who can do that. The next and the final thing I want to uh, bring up is the, our module triage board. Now, this is a publicly available kind of backlog view of all of the development and all of the modules that have been proposed and kind of this what state they're in. And again, if you're interested in contributing, feel free to just uh, leave a comment and, and say so, and we'll hook you up with the module author team. So I hope that was useful. It was a very brief introduction to Azure Verified Modules. Um, please leave us a comment in the video below or reach out to us on LinkedIn or other sites. And, and we'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to hear what you think of Azure Verified Modules. Um, so yeah, and with that, thank you very much. And we'll see you soon.